the Olympics have been sus uh, delayed a year. You're the longest serving member of the IOC. You came out early um, encouraging that to happen. What was that initial encouragement on your end met with in terms of reaction? Well, I, I think uh, more interest than, than, than apprehension at first, but I think everybody was in lockstep uh, moving towards the original date of July 24th. And, and the purpose of my statement to the, uh, in, in an interview was, look, um, there's an elephant in the room here. And, and you've got to face the prospect that there, it might not be possible to proceed on July 24th. And therefore, somebody should be thinking seriously about a plan B. And the plan, the plan B was either cancellation outright, which would destroy the, all the work of the Japanese over the last seven to ten years, and 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 you know take away an Olympic opportunity from an entire generation of athletes. So my hope was that the the the, the best solution would be a, a postponement, and then I think people started to think about that. And uh, what turned the tide at the end was uh, the World Health Organization saying this. This curve is not leveling out. In fact, it's getting increasingly steep. And even though things are better in Japan because they moved quickly when this uh, struck, uh, the rest of the world has not. And so even if Japan is uh, virus three, uh, free, rather, uh, the rest of the world may not be able to travel to Japan. So let's start thinking about what needs to happen. The last time the Olympics were canceled was during World War II. Um, how much consideration do you think was actually given to canceling the games where they would not have then happened in Tokyo? I, I think it, it's one of the alternatives you have to consider. But uh, I, we're, I'm very happy that, that the IOC and, and Japan uh, came to the same conclusion that it's better to postpone than to cancel. The Olympics today are probably the most complex and interrelated and interconnected peaceful event on the face of the planet. And there are thousands and thousands of moving parts that, that will have to be arranged. I think it can be done, but it's going to take a lot of work. And, and I think this involves about 11,000 athletes from 206 countries uh, and 35 to 40 international sports federations. And it, it's an event that has to, all of these things have to occur within 17 days. It's, it's really extraordinary. The, the Games in 2020 were heading for being the best organized Olympics ever. And they have the capacity to, to put that on hold for a year and, and, and recreate it. But it's, it'll be complicated. How do you view this moment in history um, in terms of the obstacle being worked through relative to other challenges the Olympics have experienced over the years? Well, I'd say this is the first time in, in sort of modern Olympic memory where you, you face a worldwide health crisis as opposed to a worldwide political crisis or a war or something like that. If we get this put together for 2021, it'll be a, a real indication of, of how international goodwill and particularly among the youth of the world uh, can be a, an example uh, to follow. I've always thought that, you know, one of the reasons that people are inordinately disappointed when something goes wrong with the Olympics is that when it goes right, it shows, you know, the world can work uh, together, even if it's only a couple of weeks every four years. But if that happens, maybe the world can work too. So um, this, this will be, if we come out of this the way we all hope, it'll be a a, a huge statement of what can be done when people are willing to work for the, the same objective. How has your day-to-day -day work changed since the postponement? Well, other than sitting in, mainly in a, in a nice office with air conditioning and whatnot, I'm in the basement at home. Uh, but uh, these days, you know, if you have your laptop and you're plugged in, you've got your office with you. There's been a fair amount of uh, um, involvement with the media and, and uh, writing and doing op-eds and things like that, uh, again, which can be done uh, uh, from home. So it's, 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 you can get used to it and uh, I don't have to wear socks to work. <laughs> there you go. Um, anything you plan to do 
during this time is shelter in homes uh, in effect that's just different from your normal day to day? I would say my perspective, this, this is a, an existential threat uh, to the world. And, and it, it unfortunately was not taken seriously enough when it first uh, broke. And that's allowed the, the contact that en enables the pandemic aspect of the, uh, the virus to demonstrate that, uh, how serious it is. So we've really got to figure out uh, how, to, how to change that curve. Uh, I have great faith in the intellectual output of all of the people that are working on uh, identifying a, uh, a vaccine for this. And, and that's something that will be uh, uh, very important uh, as it comes. But I, I guess the big life lesson is, and if you just focus on the Olympics, is, is this is not the only pandemic we're likely to face uh, in the years ahead. And, and, and I hope that, we, you know, the lessons we've learned from fiddling a bit while Rome burned uh, will not be lost and that the next time this happens there'll be an instantaneous uh, reaction to it 